Hey guys, how's it going? Well, I don't usually do this, but I thought I would weigh into the next Call of Duty game hype. And as you know, we had some interesting news over the weekend that was kind of leaked but not leaked and strange but it was basically Call of Duty Advanced Warfare was announced and um, it's going to be the first game developed by Sledgehammer and uh, yeah there's there's an awful lot of hype this time of year about the new Call of Duty game people have got their hopes really high this is generally the most positive time about Call of Duty everybody thinks the game is going to be amazing and there's going to be all these new innovation and yeah everybody's really excited but uh, just quickly before I get to that the gameplay that you're watching is some uh, Modern Warfare 2 free-for-all action with possibly my favorite favorite gun in all of Call of Duty, which is the silenced for mass with sopping power. Now I thought I'd use Modern Warfare 2 because Modern Warfare 2 for me was kind of like the turning point for Call of Duty. It was, you know, when the whole Infinity Ward Activision thing went down and that's why Respawn Entertainment now exists and it was kind of a pivotal moment. And I think that this new game could possibly be a pivotal moment for Call of Duty as well, with Sledgehammer being a brand new developer in terms of this is the first Call of Duty game that they've developed, and this is going to be the first Call of Duty game that we've had in probably seven or eight years, which has been properly developed for next-gen hardware. So what we know for sure about the next Call of Duty game is that it's going to be called Advanced Warfare, which may be a sequel to Modern Warfare 3. It seems pretty similar, and I believe some of the same characters are in the trailer or in some of the pictures that have been released. And like I said, it's going to be developed for Next Gen first. I, I do believe it's still coming out on PS3 and 360, so I don't know how they're going to scale it back. I guess they'll do lower res textures or they'll remove features or something like that. But it's definitely going to be developed for PS3, uh, PS4 and Xbox One and PC first. It's been in development for three years, apparently. This is the first Call of Duty game that will have released that's been on the three-year cycle as opposed to the previous games which have always been on a two-year cycle both you know switching between Treyarch and Infinity Ward and now we have Sledgehammer. Now the CEO of Activision Bobby Kotick recently described the game as one of the best if not the best Call of Duty games ever which sounds promising but that's kind of his job to make the game sound amazing so that we'll all get really hyped up and buy it. So we had the reveal over the weekend there's a, a pretty long trailer it's announced that Kevin Spacey is going to be the villain there's going to be exoskeletons and a near future setting and PMCs and all that sort of stuff and it, it sounds pretty good and, and the gameplay well not the gameplay but the footage that we've seen that's supposedly in game looks pretty promising so at this point the game does look pretty solid I think what we can expect from this next Call of Duty game is it's probably going to be pretty close to the Call of Duty games that we've had in the past Visually, it might look sharper than the previous games, but I don't think it's going to be ridiculously different. Now, I could be completely wrong about that. When Call of Duty 4 came out, it was a complete game changer. It was the best, one of the best looking games on uh, the consoles at that time. So you never know. This this new one might look amazing. We can definitely expect things like kill streaks, the same sort of uh, team-based multiplayer. I would say similar sort of modes. If it doesn't look the same, it's going to feel very, very familiar, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Now I'm not going to go into too in-depth analysis of the trailer and all the stuff that's come out. There's heaps of videos like Drifters put out stuff and I'm sure T. Martin and a whole bunch of other guys have put out stuff about what the new game's going to be like. I think Drifters even seen some uh, alpha footage and you know there's other people who've got more inside knowledge than me because I don't have any <laughs> inside knowledge at all. But uh, yeah, so I'm not going to speculate too much on the game. What I wanted to talk about though is what we as the Call of Duty community want from the next Call of Duty game. Now obviously we've been shouting over the last few years that we want innovation, we want new things from Call of Duty, we want it, essentially we want it to feel the same, but we want it not to be the same game just with new maps and you know, uh, new characters and new gun models, because that's very much what Call of Duty feels like year on year, just feels like more maps, more weapons, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be quite tiring, and I think that generally speaking the Call of Duty community is over the formula where we're at at the moment. Ghosts is a clear indication of this. So I think the most important thing and the thing that most people will agree that needs to change and needs to be in the next Call of Duty game is we need a new game engine. They've been iterating the same engine since Call of Duty 2, believe it or not, which is the Infinity Ward engine, which in itself was an updated version of the Quake 3 Arena engine. So to put this in perspective, the Quake 3 Arena engine was first released, I believe it was back in 1999, so that is 14 years ago. Now obviously they can make improvements to uh, texture mapping and particle effects and lighting and 
ragdoll eff effects and, and this is all stuff that they've added to the engine over the years but essentially they've been building on the same base which is 14 years old so I think it's high time that we had a new engine and uh, I'm definitely hoping that they do this for advanced warfare I mean seriously how much money do they make each year and they can't afford to put some uh, R&D time into creating a new engine it's it's ridiculous so things I'd like to see better would be better lighting. It would be cool if we could have destruction maybe on the level of Battlefield or at least more than the so-called dynamic maps that we had in Ghosts. Better textures, obviously, this isn't too hard to do. And things like particle effects and the little details that Next Gen is, is really capable of. Now the next thing that I really hope that they do in Advanced Warfare is they bring the game back to a more serious tone. Now I know that Call of Duty isn't really a serious military shooter in the sense that, you know, it's the stuff that you can do is ridiculous. Uh, dual wielding uh, weapons and dolphin diving and all that sort of stuff is like a Hollywood movie. But if you go back to Modern Warfare, the original Modern Warfare and the earlier games, the tone of the game was very serious and I think this made it more immersive and somehow better. So I'm hoping that with this new game that we don't have ridiculous stuff like there's no more Snoop Dogg DLC or Predator DLC. I mean that sort of stuff is fun, um, don't get me wrong, I actually bought the Snoop Dogg DLC just because it's stupid and it was like three bucks or something like that. But it really does break the immersion and take you out of the whole experience and I don't think that's good for the game. I'd definitely like to see more real weapons and less prototypes, less fantasy guns. Black Ops 2 was good, but I don't know, I find it hard to make a connection and it just doesn't seem, again, it doesn't seem as immersive if you don't have those real guns and things that you can associate with reality. If it's all laser beams and, and guns that they only made 20 of, it just, I don't know, I don't think it's as good as if we have real guns with real attachments and stuff. So I'd definitely like to see more realism put in, in that regard. I think we could do with less game modes as well, definitely not as few as Titanfall, but maybe um, keep it to a maximum of 10. I know that there's everybody has their own choice in terms of game modes, people like different things, but I think that the list has become quite bloated over the last few years and it kind of fractures the uh, Call of Duty community and sometimes, particularly with the older games, it can be hard to play anything but Team Deathmatch or Free For All. So for people who like Domination and some of the other popular game modes, having a million different other ones that sort of splits the community isn't necessarily a good thing. And I think Call of Duty needs to get back to its roots and really focus on what it did well originally. Now I kind of mentioned that I didn't want to see Snoop Dogg or Predator DLC and stuff like that and I think their strategy with DLC going forward, it needs to be completely revamped. I think that the strategy of releasing four map packs that, you know, yes they have been releasing things like Extinction and Zombies and you know now you get a new gun with the map pack is nice but it would be nice if you could buy the weapon by itself. Like I, I like the Ripper, I've picked it up and used it in a couple of games but I'm not going to blow 20 bucks on a map pack just so I can use that weapon. So it would it it would be nice if they had a more flexible digital strategy. So anyway, that's my two cents on Advanced Warfare and where I think Call of Duty should go in the future. Anyway, leave me your thoughts. Um, what are you thinking about Call of Duty Advanced Warfare? I know that a lot of people didn't buy into the ghost hype and didn't end up buying the game. A lot of my friends didn't end up getting ghosts. So uh, let me know if you're excited for the game, if you're not excited for the game and why. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank you for watching and yeah, I'll catch you later.